Are we ready? Yes. Hey guys, welcome to today's video. So as you can clearly tell from the title, this video is hopefully going to be me trying to give you guys out there watching some advice on how I got the grades that I did at GCSE and A level. So yes, you can see from the title and the thumbnail, I got 11 A stars at GCSE and three A stars at A level. I really hope this video is useful for you guys out there who are doing GCSEs and A levels. I wanted to just combine it into one big video because I thought doing it separately was just not worth it because I used basically the same methods and ideas and revision techniques at GCSE and A level. The only difference was that at A level it was a bit more intense, yes, because A levels are a bit more important. GCSE is almost a practice run as well so you can find out the ways that you revise best and then at A level you're more of an expert and you can do things even better. I'm really sorry the lighting keeps changing but that's natural lighting for you. Please like this video if you found it useful, if you enjoyed it, if you're gonna try and employ some of the things that I did and yeah without further ado because you're all probably waiting for the things I'm gonna tell you so we'll just move on now to the main event of the video. Tip number one is jumping straight in to the practical things that I did. I use specifications and specifications are literally your lifesaver at GCSE and A level because at university you don't get those. It's a full list of everything that you should cover when you study that topic or that module or that whole subject. It's basically what you need to know for the exam. Go away. I didn't use them that much at GCSE. I only really realized how important they were and how useful they can be at A level when I actually started to use them as like a template for my revision notes or a checklist so that I can tick off all the things that I had learned in school, the things that I understood, the things that I didn't understand and needed to go back to, or the things that we hadn't even covered yet. So I always printed them out, I would use them as checklists, I would highlight them, I would use them as a framework for my revision as I said, so I would make notes around them um, as like a very condensed way of making notes. So instead of just having me writing things out without any sort of structure, the specification is really good because it can structure your revision. You can make mind maps from the specification, lift things from the specification. They are absolutely amazing, the specifications. And I would use them in exam term, very close to the exam when I just needed to learn key points. I didn't wanna learn any waffle anymore. I just wanted the facts that I needed to know that were gonna get me the marks. Especially for science subjects, they are really useful. They might not be so much for others, but I did use them still. So for example, when I did Geography AS, I still use the specification. Tip number two is also practical and it's kind of related to specifications, is past paper questions. They are again, your lifesaver. Top secret, I actually watched a video on YouTube about this one time essentially an exam board an examining body those horrible people that make the exams what they do i think anyway from what i gathered from this video they lift things from the specification they then make a question based on one bullet point from the specification if one specification point says something like what are two like the reasons for such and such and it lists two reasons in the specification the past paper question that they're gonna set is for two marks probably list the two reasons for such and such two marks you have to write those two things and it's been lifted from the specification i'm not saying this is applicable for every subject but exam questions are essentially taken from points within the specification that is why past papers and specifications go hand in hand and they are your key to doing well in exams by doing past paper questions, you see mark schemes, you see the way in which they want you to word your answers because for GCSE and A level, it's about rope learning, unfortunately. You can see which questions come up time and time again and that are guaranteed to come up in your exam. You can find out what the format is of your exam, obviously, and it just gives you better practice under exam conditions because 
I sometimes did them untimed. Yes, I did lots of them untimed. I'd just sit and go through a past paper. I'd then mark it with the mark scheme. Sometimes, occasionally, I might do it timed and that way you can see what's taking you the longest and where you need to speed up in the exam. I did so, so many past paper questions. I did them from my specification and I also did past papers like for chemistry from a different specification because chemistry is chemistry. So basically my advice, do past papers, start early, try and do as many as you can and use them alongside your specification. Tip number three. So I made revision notes and if you've watched my first ever study with me, which I put up quite recently on my channel, I make revision notes myself. I learn best from things that I have written out myself. I can't really learn from notes either given from my teacher or those I've just printed out. I have to write it in my own way. When I make revision notes, I make condensed revision notes. I use a lot of resources. I find a website or a book or a textbook that I understand the best because often you'll have like a website and a textbook and they're both trying to explain the same thing but one of them might explain it in a way that you understand it. That is what I find a lot of the time. One website I'm like, I don't get that but when somebody else does it in a different way, I really understand it. So I pull from different resources, I condense my notes, I write them out myself and they're my revision notes that I'm going to use when I need to revise an exam term. And another key thing with revision notes is to start making them early. For A-level definitely, I started from day one. September, you go back to school, I'd start making my revision notes. If you do it as you go along, then it's going to make your exam term so much easier because all you have to do is kind of learn it. Also with making revision notes, you can highlight your weaknesses, you can highlight the things that you don't understand and make sure that you understand it there and then instead of waiting until the day before your exam. I will be making some videos in the future very soon about the exact way that I write my notes. So like the first notes that I'd make with any kind of subject would most of, would involve kind of writing things out and condensing things and then as time passes and you get closer and closer to the exams I would start to condense and condense and condense notes. So I would start off with revision notes that were pretty long and then I'd say transition and I'd transfer those notes to flashcards where I could condense things a bit more and it would be a way that I could actually memorise things better instead of just off a blank piece of paper which isn't that helpful. And then I can maybe condense further by using the specifications. So the idea with my revision was that I start off with a bit too much information to learn and then by like a week before the exam it's like things that you can revise really really quickly and really effectively in short spaces of time so that you memorize it. Where's number four? Oh, I can't actually count to ten according to this. Okay, so leading on from revision, know how you revise best because everyone will learn things in a different way. I found that GCSE was a definite practice run. As I said, I found out that I revised best doing this and this, and in that way at A-level, I was even better at doing it. So you need to use GCSE as a practice run. Yes, you wanna do well at GCSE, but you're gonna make mistakes with revising. You might spend hours and hours trying to learn something and it doesn't go in, but that's gonna happen because you've never done this stuff before at GCSE. And in starting with your revision early, that means that there's more of a chance that you're gonna to get to know yourself and get to know how you learn. So tip number five is to teach someone else. If you understand it completely, then you will be able to explain it to someone at ease and without like looking at your notes maybe, or without being like, oh, I don't actually know. And then if somebody asks you a question about it, you can answer their question and you can help them try and understand it. That is why you work in classrooms. You work collaboratively with people, collaboratively with people because not everyone understands topics straight away. Some people struggle with this, others struggle with that. So by working in a classroom environment, you have so many people to talk to and I'm not saying talk about the socials, which you can do because that's fun to do sometimes, but talk about the subject. Teach your friends, teach your family at home. I'm sure your family would love to know about ionic bonding in chemistry when in reality they have no clue what you're talking about and they're probably quite bored. Teach your pets, go for walks, talk to them. Even though they can't give you feedback or ask you questions, you're still talking to someone. So try it. Okay, so tip number six, make mistakes and make mistakes early. I, I am the worst for this. 
I really don't like making mistakes. I've grown up as someone who learned how to play the piano, for example, and when I was playing a piece, if I hit the wrong note, I just burst into tears. That was it. I was gone. The same thing with dance. If I, if I couldn't do something, I would just cry. And I'm the worst culprit for that, but the importance of making mistakes cannot be underestimated. When you make mistakes, you learn from it and it means that you won't make that mistake again. I hate making mistakes, I hate getting things wrong, I still do now, I mean I don't cry every time, I'm kind of a bit better, but make mistakes, mark things wrong when you do it wrong, put a massive cross next to it and tell yourself that that is wrong and then correct it and then maybe put it in a flashcard. You learn more from your mistakes than you do from the things that you get right because when you get things right all the time your body's just like hey well yeah I'm just getting it right whereas if you get it wrong your body's like mmm. So you actually do something about it to make it right and to fix the problem. So number seven is about time management and staying organized. So I recently made a video about time management so you can watch that if you want but essentially at GCSE and A level I'd always have my folders organized, keep up to date with folder organization, like just stay on top of it and time management is just a lot to do with prioritizing, making to-do lists, using planners. At school we were given planners, I loved my planner, <gasps> I literally loved planners. Kind of related to that, tip number eight is revision timetables. I use them at GCSE and A level, I don't actually use them that much now, but I made them on Word very easily just with a table. They weren't very extravagant and they weren't very detailed. I would just use them to kind of block out my time and block out my days. I would use them especially for like holiday periods and the exam season most importantly. And it did work well for me, it did help me structure my revision but I didn't obviously stick to them religiously and they weren't as detailed as I said. I didn't put extensive timings in it, it would just block out my time and kind of help me feel organised and structured and know when everything is happening. I would like put them up on my wall near my desk and that way I could see it. Also like my, my family could see my revision timetable because obviously you need to let your family and your friends know when you've got exams so they can kind of not disturb you when you're revising and kind of just look out for you at those times when you're most stressed and kind of vulnerable. Yeah, tip number nine, I think this is tip number nine, is to take breaks and take time to do the things that you enjoy. Throughout the year, you don't have to be rising all the time. Even though I've said, stay on top of revision, stay on top of organization, make revision notes as you go along. Even though I've said all that, I'm not saying that you have to revise all the time. You need to take time out, you need to spend time with your friends, you need to do your extracurricular things that you love and enjoy, like dance or running or going to the gym. You need to do those things that make you happy and bring positive energy into your life. You need to pace yourself and treat it like a marathon, because it is a marathon. If you've got, for GCSE anyway, like 20 something exams to do, it is a huge marathon. You don't want to start off sprinting. Think like a runner and don't let work dominate your life because at the end of the day yes your exams are important but they're not the be all or end all i say that too quickly sometimes be all or end all anyway spend time talking to your friends in school about things other than work like talk about the top gossip talk about your favorite celebs talk about things about talk about food don't just talk about work all the time because sometimes that just drives you insane, especially in exam season. Yes, you've got exams, but that doesn't mean that you have to be talking about work and revision all the time with your friends. Like, no. My last tip, tip number 10, if I have counted correctly this time, is to stay positive and to try not to stress and to look after yourself essentially. I know it's very hard to do sometimes. It's so easy to sit here and be like, you shouldn't stress because I stress. I make these mistakes. I sometimes work myself too hard. I work myself into the ground and I'm speaking from the mistakes that I made because at not so much at GCSE, but at A-level for the two years of my life, they weren't the happiest times of my life. Looking back, I should have been happier. I should have really been enjoying those last two years of school. Not for the exams, not for the work, but the, just for the people and the environment and the vibes because the university is a whole different story. I like sometimes wish I could be back at school and it sometimes frustrates me that I 
I took it too seriously almost and I was not in a very good mental state at all. So I'm saying to you now, school is, I know sometimes you're like, oh, school is awful. You're always complaining about your teachers or your friends or whatever. You're gonna, in a few years time, you're gonna look back at your school memories and be like, do you remember this? Do you remember that? Do you remember that teacher? Those funny things that we did. School makes so many memories and it's such an amazing time of your life, even though it sounds so boring because you've just got exams to do. But at the end of the day, school is a long time of your life. It's a whole part of your childhood and your teenage years. So it only comes around once, whether you only live once or not. Like, make the most of it, enjoy it, stay positive. Thinking more in terms of exams, don't go in thinking that you're gonna fail and that you're gonna make the mistakes. Because at the end of the day, you need to change that mentality and think of an exam as a means through which you can demonstrate to that examiner, whoever's marking your paper, that you know what you're talking about. You wanna prove the examiner's wrong because although it may seem that they're trying to catch you out and they're trying to make you make mistakes, I mean, it doesn't surprise me that they're all these examiners are sitting there in like a group and they're like, thinking about how they can catch all the students out and make them do badly but at the end of the day you don't want to be one of those people falling into those traps you want to have made the mistakes you want to have learnt from it you want to have revised effectively and go into that exam ready to ace it i know they are terrifying and i i get heebie-jeebies and i get butterflies when i used to walk past the exam hall and i used to think about going into the exam hall it really did scare me but you just gotta be bigger than that and be braver because at the end of the day, it's just a bit of paper. It's just a few pages. <sighs> so, they are my 10 tips. I just wanted to focus on the things I thought were most important and the things that really, really helped me to do well. I mean, try not to stress, as I said, it's very easy to say, um, but at the end of the day, your grades really don't define you. So I finished my A-levels like a couple of years ago now and if I'm completely honest with you, not one person, I don't think ever, at university or anything, has asked me what grades I got for GCSE and A-level. Literally. No one has asked me that. Like, a week or so after results day, it all kind of just fizzles out and your grades are just letters on a piece of paper. They're nothing anymore. Nobody is going to ask you and judge you for what you got. I know how you feel and I felt the same and I wish I could have told myself this and watched this video a few years ago because it might not have changed my mentality but it might have made me think and that is why I want to tell you guys that your grades don't really matter at the end of the day as long as you get the grades that you need to progress further in life then that's okay nobody's gonna ask you what you got and be like oh so you didn't get the A star you only got an A you know nobody's gonna ask that I really hope you enjoyed this video please like it comment down below and subscribe for new thank you as always and I will speak to you in my next one And I know that we all have those feelings like, I wish I was a cat. I mean, cats have life so easy sometimes. They just sleep, they get the food given to them. I mean, what more could you want, right? I mean, like, look, look at this boy. Those thoughts have crossed all our minds. Don't deny it.